Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, and it's week one, and I think we already have a game of the year contender. The Backyard Brawl isn't talked enough about being one of the best rivalries in football. Watching that game, I feel like I just went 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. I am banged up as a college football fan, and that was just an absolute blast to watch. Again, before we get into it, just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. If you guys like the content, consider subscribing, join the community, come talk some ball, whether you're a Pitt fan, whether you're a West Virginia fan, or whether you just like talking ball. I'm going to kick it to you. Thoughts? Thoughts on the game? That football game needs to be played more. I, I Because that's a game where I get West Virginia's fans are always pretty w- w- rowdy and, and wound up and, and, oh, yeah. and electric. But that game brought out, like, I think what Pitt should be more often. Because yes. I think it, it doesn't work out in Pitt's favor that they don't play at a stadium that's on the school because they, they play at the Pittsburgh Steelers spot. But that those oh, yeah. fans, they look, like, into it. That's what you want. I think you want out of Pitt. I think they're the team – they're a good enough team to have that fan, the support of those fans. And I think there's enough support going around if, if, if they're into it and energized. And that game certainly brought out of them. That place was absolutely buzzing from both fans. The box score is up again. Unacceptable. But it's just, I mean, that's the kind of game that you live for as a college football fan. I wasn't even, like, invested in any way, really. But it was just a game that you love to watch. I couldn't wait. I had it marked on our sheet in the summer. What I want to talk about a little bit more is what this Pitt team is going to look like heading into 2022. I think we got a lot of vibes that Pat Narduzzi was going to bring back that old Pitt where we're going to run the ball, we're going to dominate the time of possession, and we're going to let our defense handle it. Now, the score doesn't necessarily reflect that, but you can tell that's what Pat Narduzzi wants to do. Yeah, I mean, they line up in a lot of eye formation – did run the ball pretty – I mean, they they gave that top tailback a lot of carries, and he was, he was a pounder. That's what he was doing, and, and I think that's what they want to do. But I also think Keaton Slovis is just better than I thought. Yes. Like, that was a really clean game out of him, and they made big plays, and I think the wideouts are very good despite losing Addison. So I think this team's offense actually is going to do a little better than I thought. I thought they were going to have to rely on playing, like, 10 to 17 football games, but I think they're going to be able to score. Yeah, Rodney Hammond Jr., and they didn't even run the ball. You look at this box score, like Israel Abacanda, only two yards of carry. Daniel Carter, only two yards of carry. Rodney Hammond Jr. is an absolute hammer, and it was just he was a grown man out there. And that's kind of what you thought would happen against West Virginia. Now, West Virginia impressed me with how active their front seven was. I mean, Dante Stills is an absolute menace. And if you would have told me, I think the sacks were like seven to three in West Virginia's favor, I would have told you you're crazy. But West Virginia's defensive line, like they came to play. And I was very impressed with how they looked. But going back to your point, Keith Slovis is a guy that I think Pat Narduzzi needs to ask a little bit more to do. When you're thinking about how you want this offense to look, I'm okay with them kind of going back to the more traditional how Pat Narduzzi likes to run his football team, kind of run the football, let your defense dominate. Keen Slovis is capable of getting the ball out to these receivers. And again, Conte Munfield coming from Akron looked awesome. Jared Wayne looked really strong. I like, I, they got some playmakers to get the ball to. Yeah. And that's the, I mean, that's the thing I, I that kind of surprised me is I just didn't think they'd be, where would they get the explosiveness? And I, I, the one part that I think favors them is West Virginia does play a very soft shell coverage yeah. defense. So, it, I think it is favorable conditions to look good as a Keaton Slovis because there were also moments where he was just holding the ball forever. It seemed like to, to like yeah, you mentioned those sack numbers, but like Keaton Slovis hanging on to the ball and getting sacked on a three man pressure. It's like that's just that's that's too long holding the ball. But at the end of the day, I think for the most part he played solid. I do think West Virginia is a slightly easier team to to move the football on, especially in the air. But I mean, what else? Yeah, just a really good game. Really fun. It, it, it really was. And when you look at West Virginia and what they did on offense, I I actually like kind of how the offense looked. I thought it could have been cleaner, but they got some absolute trees on the outside, and that's what they wanted to do. Like Bryce Wheaton, we're just going to throw it up to, to you, let you draw pass interference, or just make the catch. He made the catch a lot. I mean, he was really impressive. What I, I mean, obviously, the, the pick six off his hands really hurts. But again, 
these wide receivers can make plays down the field. And one other thing I wanted to know is when you have a hot hand, you got to ride it. And I feel like Neil Brown kind of missed an opportunity. I mean, every time CJ Donaldson touched the ball, the good things happened and they still wanted to give the ball to Tony Mathis. And I get it. Donaldson's a freshman. Tony Mathis is your guy. That's the most experienced, probably the best back. But at the end of the day, Donaldson was the hot hand. I thought they should have given it to the ball, given him the ball more. Yeah. I mean, you can even just look at those numbers. He was just reeling good plays off every time. I will say, I don't know. I think this score, honestly, like I know we're talking a lot about the offenses. I think there was like a lot of chaos that made this yes. score look. Yes. I don't think the offenses are like great on this team. I, like I'm saying Pitt's offense is better than I thought they would be, but I thought they'd be like bottom, bottom tier. I think probably they're closer to like an average, maybe slightly above, but not much. But this game was chaotic. It was very like, oh, throw the – throw the stat line out when you're playing the rivalry because it did look like that and there were fumbles and there were block punts and picks and pick sixes and so it was like a lot going on and I mean trying to keep up with that Purdue Penn State like my mind's just in a haze but obviously just a super fun game so really good start to the year yeah and Pitt's a team that I'm looking for in the ACC it wasn't a team that I was too high on heading into the year I just thought they lost too much on offense OC obviously Kenny Pickett Jordan Addison, this offense I think can still make some noise, but it is going to look a little different. They're going to lean on the defense. They're going to lean on the run game. But again, when you look at the ACC outside of Clemson, like there's not that many dominant defenses. Pitt is one of them, and I'm kind of excited to see kind of the the battle between the high powered offenses like the Miami, like the Wake Forest, and then the kind of high powered defenses more the NC State, Pitt, Clemson. Which one emerges? I'm keeping my eye a little bit more on Pitt because I was very, very impressed with what they're yeah, They're going to be do. tougher. They're going to be tougher than I thought, and that's partially because Keaton Slovis, I was expecting much less. And he I can't play. wait to see that Pitt-Tennessee game in the sense that we just saw Tennessee just run all over the field, and I get it. It's Ball State. Tennessee's offense is going to be a problem. Tennessee's going to be a problem, but Pitt's defense is also going to be a problem. I was more impressed with some of the guys in the back end. I get they were getting beat a little bit by some good wide receivers to West Virginia, but Servosia Dennis is a dog. And then uh, the whole off, the whole defensive line for Pitt are dogs. And I was very, very impressed with what they can do. Guys, wanted to keep it short for you, but again, the backyard brawl was an absolute – I mean, that's how you want to start the college football season. Can't wait for tomorrow. Watching the Penn State game finish up. Excited to check that out. Appreciate you guys checking us out. If you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.